This is Mike Farrell, Rivals.com, and I have the best job in the world because I get to talk to guys like Mac Brown, who are college football legends. And we're talking about he's trying to make his, his legacy at North Carolina, and this recruiting class could very well help. Um, it's a small class of 18 right now, but there's a lot of quality in here. I wanted to talk about the offense first with you, Coach, and, and what you like about Drake May, your quarterback. You know, Mike, uh, first, thanks for having me on. And uh, we all appreciate how hard you work and uh, how hard so many in your business work to, to bring the message to, to fans. So thank you thanks. For, for what you do. Uh, Drake is tall. He's 6'5". He's on campus now. He's very mobile. Uh, so he's really a dual threat quarterback more than people think. And he's, he's very accurate. He's, he's got the, the strong arm, the long arm. Uh, but we've been really impressed with his feet. Uh, in his first couple of weeks on, on campus. And I, I imagine learning from Sam Howell is going to be just exactly what you would want to do, the best quarterback in college football. Yes, he, he'll he be able to learn from Sam, but also his dad was a quarterback here. And and his brother was a, a top player for Roy Williams in basketball here. So he's grown up. His, his brother, other brother, was a baseball player at Florida. Uh, mother was a soccer player. Uh, dad was actually a graduate assistant for me here when I first got here at North Carolina. So uh, he's grown up in an athletic family, uh, and it's very, very important for him. Like Sam Howell, Sa Sam is passionate. Uh, about football every day he has no hobbies he's over here more than I am I think and uh, Drake May seems to be the same guy and, and both of these guys former commitments to other programs so it just shows how uh, I guess resilient I won't say persistent because persistent sounds annoying but resilient you have to be in this recruiting process yeah I like resilient better you're <laughs> You're right. It does sound annoying. We, we were fortunate in, in a way that when we first got here, we weren't very popular and fans weren't coming and people didn't think we were going to win. So Sam always wanted to come to North Carolina, but he'd already committed to Florida State and there wasn't any reason for him not to. Willie Taggart had come in. It was a new program after Jimbo Fisher and they were excited. And then Sam saw that there, there was some excitement as we we're coming in and he trusted us. So he bought in. And then Drake did the same thing. He committed to another place really, really early before he saw us play. And then he saw the, the stands full. And then he saw us moving the ball. And he liked what he saw with our offense. And, and all of that uh, j just helped us, Mike, for, for hanging in there uh, in the long run. And your wide receiver group gets bigger um, physically and uh, literally with three wide receivers here, you got a slot and Gavin Blackwell and two good sized receivers in, in Kobe and JJ. So tell me, um, does the success you have with your current receivers, I mean, is that something that's just so easy to sell now? Yes, absolutely. Our offense was so good. Uh, we've got running backs across the country wanting to come, receivers wanting to come. We were able to get the ball more to Garrett Walston this year at tight end. So now tight ends, uh, we, we signed a really good tight end. Uh, so uh, I, I really think that our offense not only was good, but it got a lot of publicity and people liked watching it. We had a lot of national TV games. So uh, a, a lot of these guys were highlighted and, and they saw what Daz Newsom and, and De'Ami Brown could do in, in this offense. And, and what needs to happen, Mike, with these recruits is, is just like uh, uh, Bryson Nesbitt at tight end. They need to see themselves projected in that offense and, and see where it works for them. And, uh, and Bryson can actually move to different places on the field and he can play more places than uh, just a, a, a tight end that's in tight or an H-back. He can move out to a slot. He can, he can be a, a factor with his length on the goal line. So... Uh, I think those people watching us play this year, the publicity Sam's gotten, the two running backs and the wide receivers have really given us an opportunity to, to open up a lot of doors in recruiting we probably couldn't have opened up the first year. Now let's flip to the side of the ball that needs some help. And a lot of these guys will be immediate impact football players because this, this class is about defense to me. Um, you've got four linebackers. You've got multiple defensive backs. You got two crazy, freaky, big defensive ends. Um, how important was it to really get guys not only, you know, that you coveted, but that are physically ready to step on the field next year? Mike, when we left here in 97, we, we had the number one defense in the country. 
and I checked it out. Offenses were different then. We were giving up, I think, 10 points a game or 9.7. We were giving up 210 yards a game, and we had three number one draft choices. So it, it was a legitimately really good defense, even though offenses weren't as wide open and Florida State was, but a lot of them weren't as wide open as, as they are today. And I think the last two classes of big defensive linemen are similar to that class because these guys are big. They can run. You're, you're talking about uh, Keyshawn Silver, who's 290 pounds at, at 6'5". You're, you're talking about Jabari Ritzy, who actually was on the cross-country track team running three miles a day at 275 pounds and 6'4", 5". Uh, so they can really run. And then you, you add them to last year's group uh, when you start looking at guys like um, Des Evans. You start looking at uh, K.J. Binkley, who, who got hurt and didn't get to play because of a, a lower leg injury. Miles Murphy, Clyde Pender. Uh, we're starting to look more like a, a big-time college football team. And I've always said, Mike, you got to look at getting off the bus before you can play it. Yeah, and, and your competition in the ACC starts and ends with Clemson. I mean, yes, you have to play everybody else, but that's the bar that everybody wants to reach. And, and when you see them get off the bus, it's, it's quite evident that they're a little bit ahead of everybody else. Um, in, in playing them, in, in watching what Dabo's done there and how he sort of recruited the state of North Carolina, but also other areas you want to recruit like Georgia, um, is, is there a, a game plan in mind as to how your, your defense wants to look? Like Ra Ra reminds me of Isaiah Simmons. I mean, is there a look you want on defense that, that you think specifically counteracts what Clemson does? Yes. Uh, Dabo's done as good a job as anybody in the country. I mean, you look at them, they're, they're deep. Uh, everybody talks about, well, they lose a lot of seniors. They were starting freshmen this year that were better than people's seniors. So I don't want to hear how, about young players. I don't want to hear about no depth. I mean, those guys are really, really good. Uh, so it, it, it's a huge challenge for all of us, Mike. The other thing that's good, though, when I was in the, the ACC before, uh, we didn't have coastal and Atlantic divisions. We didn't have a path for any of us to get to the BCS at that time, except really Florida State, because they were better than the rest of us. So if we won, we went to a lesser bowl. If Florida State won, they went to the uh, BCS game. And now there is a clear path of how you can get to the college football playoff and then the national championship. And, and that's to win your division for us and beat Clemson. Yep. And it's a, a hard, uh, difficult task, but uh, it's a clear path and we know what we have to do. So everything you do is, is looking at what can you do to beat Clemson. So you, you've got to run on defense. They're going to spread you out. They're big and strong. They're going to run it right at you, but they're going to have speed guys on the outside with flares and hitches and double moves. And uh, so you better be good at corner. You've got to be able to stand up inside to, to stop the run, but they're going to have great slots as well. Yeah, and the majority of this class and, of course, last year's class are state of North Carolina guys. Last year was a little bit more balanced, but this year is like 90%. North Carolina prospects, when do you feel strategically, because at Texas it's different, but you've been at North Carolina before, when do you feel strategically you want to start branching out into other states and making those tough decisions where you say no to a kid in North Carolina that might upset his high school coach and yes to a kid in Georgia and, and deal with all of that, that drama? Yeah. Well, well, Mike, we, we had that drama in Texas because there were so many high schools and uh, I think at the, at the time I was at Texas, 375 guys were signing in Division I football on a yearly basis, and we could take 25. So that meant there were 350 mothers mad, <laughs> high school coaches mad. It's, it's tough. It's, it's difficult. And you can't make all the right decisions because there's probably 100 that could play for you. Right. And then some you take don't turn out. What we've decided here is to take our footprint from D.C. to Atlanta, and that's who we are. And we treat that pretty much like in-state. And then we will go outside of that footprint uh, to, to wherever. We, we went to Nashville to get Eli Sutton this year. Um, we, we went to Florida to, to get uh, Caden Baker and, and um, Clyde Pender last year and maybe some others. But that just quick off my mind here. So what we're going to do is we're going to recruit that footprint really hard. And then if we have a tie with somebody else, 
that's outside of that footprint with a high school coach or with a player, maybe a legacy of, of the University of North Carolina, then we'll go talk to him. But, but we're pretty much going to be uh, D.C. to Atlanta, and, and that's where the bulk of our football team is going to come from. And let's talk about the portal, because the portal is obviously changing the way everybody's handling roster management, scholarship numbers, and all that stuff. Do you look at the portal, a couple of coaches I've talked to look at it as a JUCO option where you're only going to take maybe a couple a year here and there, or do you look at it as, is this free agency in college football that's going to just go nuts over the next few years? Yeah, Mike, I, I'm not a very good portal guy. I'm, I'm not a transfer guy. I transferred myself, and, and it's, uh, I'd rather build it with high school players that we have for three and four years. Uh, we took Ty Chandler this year, who's a good running back from Tennessee. So we're, we're going to use it to fill needs. We lost the two really good running backs in Michael Carter and Javante Williams. We've got a younger room. Uh, so we felt like we needed an older guy to, to jump out there early in the season and, and help teach and, and learn, uh, let these other guys learn what to do. Uh, but we're, we're going to be that guy that you're talking about, like a junior college, where we plug in a guy here, we'll plug in a guy there. Uh, but I don't see us being a, a, a team that has uh, multiple guys coming in every year, and, and that's what we're looking for. Hopefully, we're recruiting well enough. We will not have to do that. You find it risky like JUCO? Because JUCO, there's a reason they're at JUCO. Transfers, there's a reason they're transferring. And, and you know, it could be academically for JUCO more so than academically for transfers, but they're unhappy where they are. Do you see it like JUCO where it's like high risk, high reward? Absolutely. And, and I've watched our guys. Some of the guys that left here weren't playing very much and they weren't happy and we tried to help them. Uh, but And I think the, the, the portal is really for those guys that are unhappy that want to have a new start somewhere else. And, and so if we're doing our job, Mike, and, and this is our third recruiting class, then we shouldn't have to have a whole lot of spots where we have needs because we've got three years of guys we've recruited and Larry left us some good players here uh, when we came in. Uh, but, but absolutely, uh, when you really study the portal, and we've done that like everybody else, a whole lot of the guys are, are not playing very much and unhappy. Uh, and I worry about the guy that's playing a whole lot, that, that there are no circumstances for him leaving, except he just doesn't like them. He, he doesn't want to be there. Now, if it's probation or they're firing a coach, a young man wants to get closer to home. I see that. Uh, I see if FCS guy wants to get into to big time football. I do think the portal has hurt FCS because the best players in some cases are looking for a, a, a different level of football so they can show the NFL what they're doing. And so that's not fair to an FCS guy who recruits his tail off, he evaluates this guy, everybody else misses and he becomes a great player and he loses him. Okay. Uh, but but I, I've watched it very carefully and uh, it, it'll be interesting too this year. I think there's nearly 2000 kids in the portal. It's gonna be really interesting to see who gets left out. And I think when they start studying these numbers, Mike, over time, I think we'll see fewer and fewer people going to the portal uh, that aren't playing very much because they're going to say, man, I may not get a scholarship. Right. So if I've got one here, I better keep what I've got, even though I'm not playing because I want to get my degree paid for. Right. Well, I appreciate your time, Coach. As always, follow TarHeelIllustrated.com for great UNC football coverage. Follow Rivals.com where we have the Tar Heels in the top 20 recruiting classes in the country. Bigger class next year, too. Mac Brown, as always, thank you very much. Thank you, Mike. Thanks for having me on. Have a great day. You too.